Hi, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me for this jazz guitar lesson on Blues for Herb by the great Emily Remler. Uh, a tune that I was familiar with, but I hadn't ever learned this tune until maybe a few years ago when I was um, playing some gigs with Robert Jospe, who's a, a drummer in Charlottesville, Virginia, that used to play with Emily. Um, and he wanted to add this uh, to his set list so uh, it was great for me to learn it uh, it's a very cool blues tune and I recorded a solo performance on my YouTube channel and had a lot of requests for a tutorial on this so um, I thought I'd show you how I play it and we'll do a, an analysis of the tune look at the melody and the harmony so that hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what's going on so uh, as the melody states, it's a blues, it's a 12 bar jazz blues, which is a standard form. And uh, the melody is made up uh, pretty much exclusively of the F minor blues scale. The last melodic phrase, the last two bars, has a little bit of a twist. It uh, uses some stacked fourths moving down in whole steps, much more modern sound. So it's a nice pairing of this traditional blues uh, melody coming out of the modern blues scale with uh, a little bit of a modern modern twist. So let me share with you um, the F minor blues scale and the position that that Emily's playing it in. So like I said, it's F minor blues and uh, it's going to be in third position. And we'll just run through this scale real quick in preparation for this lesson. So. second octave now a flat b flat b natural c right and so the blue note is the note that differentiates the f minor pentatonic from the f minor blue scale so f minor pentatonic does not have that blue note it's a five note scale the F minor blues scale is a six note scale with the addition uh, of that blue note. So there it is. And what does it do? It creates a chromatic passage between the fourth and the fifth degree of the scale. All right, so one flat three. Here's my four, my flat five, my five, my flat seven. In the second octave, right? Root, flat third, four, flat five, five. And I'm coming down to the flat seven. We need that note for the melody. Okay, so that's like 90% of the, the melody comes out of that position, and then we'll talk about the final statement. Um, so the first uh, phrase starts on C, all right, very bluesy. So we have C, F, A flat, B flat, B natural, B flat, A flat, F, E flat, F. All right, so those are the notes. Now we're gonna put it in time. So this phrase is a pickup. So it actually starts before measure one in the, in the tune, and it's almost an entire measure. It comes in on the end of one, right? So one, right? And that final note that I end on the F there, that's 
beat one of the first measure of the tune. So they're all eighth notes with the exception of this, right? That's a 16th note triplet followed by an eighth note. So one and two and right? One and two and here's my triplet. That's the end of three. So now we have a harmonic response. So this is like a call and response. Here's your call. Response. Right, and this is um, an F13. So we're in the key of F. This is the one chord. You may recognize it here, right, out of this shape. She's playing it here, and it's an inversion. It's the third inversion, right? We have the flat seven in the bass, so we have E flat, A, D, and F. Flat seven, major third, 13, and my root. Moving to a B flat nine, first inversion, I have D in the bass, right? This looks like a D minor seven flat five. It, is the same four notes as a D minor seven flat five, but we're calling it uh, a B flat because it's functioning as a B flat. It's functioning as the four chord in the key. Uh, and you can see this is really nice voice leading. We're retaining the F in both chords, and then we're getting nice stepwise motion. We have the D moving down a whole step, and we have the A moving down a half step, and we have the E flat moving down a half step. So that's what I consider very tight voice leading. Sounds beautiful. All right, so the first phrase. So the second phrase also starts on C, and it goes like this. So I have C, E flat, F, and then I'm coming down to that blue note, the B, and I'm going to pull off to my A flat, F, E flat, F. So, so far we have... Again, we have a melody statement and we're looking for a response with the harmony. And the harmony goes back to the F13. And then we have one note changes. The D, which is the 13, moves down a half step. So I'm going to lift up my ring finger. And we bring the C sharp into that voicing. So now I have E flat, A, C sharp, and F. Right. This is going to be an F seven sharp five third inversion so the third phrase is, is the same as the first phrase in, in the melody but the harmonic response is a little different right we have a b flat seven shell voicings so i have my root, flat, seventh, third, B flat, A flat, D, and then we move to B diminished, B, A flat, D. So that phrase. And she actually, she breaks up that B flat seven, hitting the bass, and then the third and seventh. So So the fourth phrase is just like the second phrase. And then the harmony moves back to F13. And then we move to the sixth dominant. So in the key of F, that's gonna be a D7. And she alters it, she makes it a D7 sharp nine, like 
the Hendrix chord, right? People call that the Hendrix chord, Purple Haze chord. Um, but, but she puts the A in the bass. All right, so we have this. And then we go back to uh, same notes as the first phrase. Okay, so that's a, a lot of stuff happening there. So we have the first phrase showing up again. And immediately she's jumping down and playing a G minor seven. This is the shell voicing flat seven third right so G F and C coming back with her pinky hitting it twice that F to A minor seven A G and C right root flat seven third coming back and playing the F twice now I have a B flat six nine so B flat G and C, right? So my root, my six, my nine. And then coming back and hitting that F melody note again. Now we have a B diminished. B, G sharp, and D. Play that F melody note again. And here we have a C9 sus. Okay, so that whole, that whole section together looks like this. Right? And this is basically a 2-5. It's a G minor moving to C7 with some motion in between. I have a video on uh, this, this type of motion in the context of a 2-5 um, on my channel if you want to take a look at that. It's, I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so this takes us to the final phrase of the melody. And this is a little different. It is built... Uh, on stacked fourths, so it's a, it's an intervallic idea. And what I mean by stacked fourths, if we look at the bottom melody note, it starts on C, and I'm literally just stacking fourths, a perfect fourth, so perfect fourth above C is F, and then a perfect fourth above F is B flat. And she's really gonna utilize this intervallic relationship to build a melody, so she goes up, she moves the whole thing down a whole step and comes backwards. And then she moves down um, another whole step, but she switches um, string grouping. You could do this. But she does this. So she takes those same three notes and places them on strings four, three, and two. So it's A flat, D flat, G flat. And then this gets moved down a whole step. And I have E, B, and F sharp. So far we have And then she finishes this phrase. She moves a, actually a minor third down now. E flat to a flat, and then she does a little approach with E natural. So this is not part of that stack fourths idea, um, but it's just leading us back into the tonic. And that's the final piece of that phrase. So that whole thing looks like this. So that's the entire um, melody. Uh, I'm gonna do it again. I'll 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 play it. Um, I'll play it kind of at tempo, and then I'll play it really slow.
here it is, really slow. you enjoyed uh, this tutorial of Blues for Herb. Uh, I've got a PDF for uh, those of you subscribed to my Patreon page. Uh, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. <laughs>